for this. Elizabeth Court, Miss Thompson. She's stealing my baby. Somebody stop her. Department of Children and Families. Excuse us, please, ma'am. Let me explain something to you. This is the second time that you have left your two-year-old overnight in a daycare center. The reason they call it daycare is because you're supposed to pick your child up at the end of the day. I was sick. I couldn't get out of bed. Where did you take her? She's with DCF. That's all I can tell you. When my boyfriend finds out, you're in trouble, lady. You'll be notified of a court date. I suggest you go into the piggy bank and hire a lawyer. And for the record, don't threaten the social worker. It doesn't look good on a report. You can see from the slides the full extent of the deviation. Now, Miss Ralston's parents are aware of the harassment their daughter has endured, yet will not permit her the treatment necessary to crack this condition. Uh, let me get this straight. Katie is claiming that her parents are negligent because she can't get a nose job? Corrective rhinoplasty. I see. Katie, your nose looks fine to me. This part sloped wrong and the tip's fat. Can you breathe through it? Yeah, but that's not all a nose is for. I think all parties will agree that this hardly constitutes a medical emergency. Therefore, I'm finding a summary judgment for the parents. Oh, man. I recommend counseling for Katie and her parents. Consider it a court-ordered perspective check. All parties are free to go. Recess one hour. Court is recess one hour. Had enough of the glamour of civil litigation. <laughs> it's kind of fun, exercising different muscles. Well, thanks for letting me take some cases to you. Cancer patient has to work on her doctor's schedule. That's no problem. You still need me, or am I free to go back to my docket? I'll let me buy you lunch first. I don't mind losing my hair so much. I hate my hair. Just that the chemo makes me feel so depleted. Or, <laughs> as my ex told me the first time, chemo makes you so nice. That scares the hell out of me. How long does this treatment take? The first course is two weeks, but I have to be hospitalized because the immune system is so compromised. The risk of infection is sky high. Well, if there's anything I can do. Yeah, you cannot get breast cancer. This disease makes me want to go around checking my friend's breasts for them. <laughs> I promise you I'm on top. <laughs> Who's covering for you? Good at two weeks? No, 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 one case. It's like three days, Max. What kind of case? Well, um, have you been following the Harper lawsuit? You gotta be kidding me. Tell me what you know. A uh, 16-year-old girl murdered by her boyfriend. Parents of the victim are suing parents of the killer for wrongful death, failure to supervise, looking for damages in the area of $2 million. God, you must have been a pain at Harvard. Well, it's on the news every night. I could hardly miss it. You do not want to hand this case to me. Why not? Because it's a jury trial. It's the law. We're all swimming in the same pool here, Amy. You've got to get your jury experience sometime. What do you think? I think given your circumstances, I have to say yes. And it annoys me that I don't have a choice. Oh, God, an honest judge. Okay, I'll be right there. Hey, I heard you're working on a big jury trial. Just like a real judge. Ruth Bader Ginsburg better watch your back. Aren't you supposed to be writing? Helping Mama the call again. We're past anger and moving into denial. You asked me she's still got at least six more stages of grief. She's letting you help? Mm -mm. Of course not. She's out there with a screwdriver and a cell phone and the mechanic's talking her through it. Meanwhile, she won't take my advice. Which is? My new car. <laughs> she's never going to get rid of that thing. Why not? Because Daddy bought it for her. Right before he died. Why didn't I know that? You were 17. You didn't know anything. Vincent, I think I made some progress. Oh my god, what happened? I walked in, she had her head in the toaster. I told you I needed help. Oh, there you go, sweetheart. No worse for the wear. How old is that thing anyway? Vincent, don't start about the car. I'm talking about the toaster, actually. I'm starting to identify the pattern. For your information, while you two were in here yapping, I found the problem. Head gasket. I call the garage. A new one only costs $59. How much the labor? $1,200. Uh, this is ridiculous, Mom. Why don't you let Vincent take you to the car lot? If you two don't want to help me, fine. I'll take the bus until I get my car fixed. Or walk. Nothing the matter with walking. People walk to this town for hundreds of years. I'm going to the market. 
Don't forget the ice cream for tomorrow. Wait, what's tomorrow? My sleepover. The sleepover. On a weeknight? Uh, it's teacher's workshop. There's no school. I, um, I promise my... But you're just about to start your first jury trial, Amy. This is hardly the time to... Okay. Okay, give me the money. Can you get Neapolitan? Don't push your luck. Neapolitan. Oh. Would you feel that fresh air? <coughs> How long do you give her? Out of the driveway. Honey, get your bag. We're going to be late. I can't walk. The ice cream will melt. Who are you calling? Peter. He knows how to buy a car. How's the car? It's okay. Can you tell me more? Thanks, Colin. I'm going to try your car. Good morning, counsel. Alex Reeves. It's a pleasure. Stuart Collins from Planet. Stu Collins? I wasn't sure you'd remember. We were at Harvard together. Of course. Try law. Professor Watkins' class. He was bare, wasn't he? He nearly convinced me to choose another profession. Yeah, I remember him saying, Ms. Gray, there are several areas of the law in which you'll never have to enter a courtroom. I suggest you gravitate in that direction. I guess he was wrong. Looks that way. Well, as you both know, this case has serious and long-reaching implications. One child is dead, the other is convicted of murder and is serving a life sentence. What we have to determine is whether or not the parents of the murderer were cognizant of the boy's intentions and were in a position to stop him. It's a volatile situation, and I'd like to keep the showmanship down to a minimum. I'm sure we're all on the same page. A, a certain amount of emotion is inevitable. Yeah, I'm aware of that. But facts will determine this case, not feelings. That's what the jury's going to hear. I don't want anyone turning this into Andrew Lloyd Webber. I promise not to sing. Fine. Let's pick a jury. V6 engine. Listen to that purr. Very nice. So, Mrs. Gray, what do you think? We'll need something more economical. Um, Peter, we like this car. Dad would have hated it. He would? Why? It's a gas guzzler. It gets 22 miles a gallon. You don't need an engine this big. Uh, I have a question. Why am I here? Because I care what you think. I think that you should buy this car. It has an in-dash CD player. Mother, you do not choose a car because of its accessories. What's the torque on this thing, anyways? Torque? Is that important? Um, could you excuse me for a minute? Peter, what are you doing? Do you have any idea how long it took me to get Mom to even consider buying a new car? She needs a buying plan. She's got a buying plan. She's going to look at cars, and she's going to buy one. She called me for help. Did you expect me to take the morning off from work to keep my mouth shut? Look, Mom is going to resist buying anything because that car is her last connection to Dad. What are you talking about? Mother is not sentimental. She's a realist like me. I mean, this is a major financial decision. We're not shopping for dog shampoo. You two stop bickering. It's embarrassing. Well, we're just talking. Peter, go over there and deal with that sales girl. Something about her scares me. I think it's her teeth. Honey, I know he annoys you. Just let him do his thing. He left work for this. You know what? It's fine. Just stop calling me for help if you don't want it. Where are you going? Let me ask you a few questions. Do you own firearms, Mr. Uh, Mr. Nebit? No, sir. Have you ever owned a gun? No. I'm opposed to guns. You belong to any anti-gun organization? Objection. Jurors' political affiliation is not relevant. Sustained. Counsel, approach the bench. What about lobbies? Mr. Reeves, I asked you to approach. Yes, Your Honor. I have a six-year-old. I don't fall for the death routine. I'm warning you. With all due respect, my clients are on trial because they own a gun. I need to put these jurors in some kind of context. With all due respect, your clients are on trial because their son used that gun to shoot his girlfriend in the face. Stop grandstanding. Move on from this line of questioning. We have a lot of jurors to get to. I want this jury disqualified. Motion denied. You'll never be impartial. I'm not going to let you waste my time by filling the jury with a bunch of NRA members now. Move on. Your Honor, since this is your first time presiding over the voir dire process... Finish that sentence and it could be your last in this courtroom. how much this is costing. Chanel had pedicures at her house. She had a sleepover? And the lizard lady. Wow, not at the same time, I hope. I told everyone we could try in our miracle bra. That's okay, right? No, I don't want the sports package. What would I do with it? 
can't I get the, the, the electric windows without the chrome wheels? What do the windows have to do with the wheels? Hey, hey, Mom, don't forget the girls will be here after lunch. Hold on. You're not expecting me to watch five little girls. Six, I asked you. You said it was okay. Was I drinking at the time? Well, it's only for a few hours. They'll entertain themselves. Bye, sweetie. Sorry. Grandma, what's cleavage? I have no idea. Mr. Spellman, your son Josh is currently serving a life sentence for murder. Is that correct? Yes. For the murder of 16-year-old Jeanette Harper, correct? Yes. Two weeks before the murder, was your son suspended from school? Yes. For what reason? He got in a fight in gym class. No one was seriously injured. The other boy had eight stitches in the face, I think. Mm -hmm, because he fell against the bleachers. Josh also had some brushes with the law resulting in one arrest. It was a traffic violation. Do you own any firearms? My husband does. Where does he keep them? Locked in a cabinet in the basement. He has the only key. Was it your husband's gun that Josh used to murder his girlfriend? Yes. Any idea how he got it? Objection. False for speculation. <clears throat> Sustained. Prior to the murder, did anyone ever recommend that your son get counseling or therapy? Yes, one of his teachers. What did you do? I answered all these questions at the other trial. That was different. That was a murder trial. Counsel approached the bench. The jury is well aware that her son is a murderer. You can stop hammering that home. I think it's an important element. I asked you to watch the showmanship. You used the word murder seven times in the last minute. If you're trying to get this woman to lash out and show her own temper, maybe the jury will think like mother like son. That's an interesting angle. I'm afraid I didn't think of it. Like hell you didn't. Now stop it. Mr. Spellman, did you take the teacher's advice and send your son to therapy? No. Why not? Why not? He didn't seem that bad to us. He didn't seem that troubled. leader is. When did cars switch to the metric system? We're bored. That's funny, I'm not. Can you take us bowling? No. How about the arcade? Sweetie, I don't even have a car that works right now. You have five friends. You can't entertain yourself? Your mother's new laptop computer's in her room. Why don't you go and play with that? We already did. I think Chanel broke it. Sweetie, I really am busy. May, May I call you back? Miss Harper died from a gunshot wound to the face. The bullet entered the frontal lobe and death would have been immediate. The shot was fired from a 38 caliber pistol, a pistol which was registered to Mr. Frank Spellman. Objection, Dr. Atkinson is a medical examiner, not a gun salesman. Have a rolled. I withdraw the question. Your Honor, at this point, I would like to submit Exhibit A, photos taken by the coroner at the scene of the crime. Approach the bench. Your Honor, no one is on trial for murder here. Josh Spellman has already been convicted. Why should we ask the jury to examine the evidence of the crime? The defendant's demeanor prior to the act and, and the rage with which he committed the crime are arguably relevant to the parents' knowledge of his behavior. Let me see the photos again. Your Honor? Wait. I think we're ready to revisit the idea of a settlement. It'll take two hours. I'll pay you for it. 
no, you don't have to pay me for it. What, no, is it something to do with the car? Sort of. No, you cannot do this to me. You know, I hate to ask you, but I couldn't very well say no to Amy, given her circumstances. Well, she's not the only one with circumstances. If I don't get a car soon, you both will end up driving me around that, which is worse. Our offer is what it's always been, 200. That is an insult. The Harpers feel that their daughter's life is worth more than the house. We're asking two million, and that's a bargain. You can't meet us halfway. Not even close. I just don't see that much evidence against my clients. I've got a grieving mother who's going to go on the stand and obliterate the evidence. You give me a decent number, I can stop that from happening. Mr. Collins, we are not going to discuss this trial as if it were a chess game. If you are betting on me allowing some melodrama for the jury, you might want to look at that number again. Come on, you know that offer's ridiculous. Don't let them intimidate you. You are ethically obligated to take that offer to your clients. Amy, I'm telling you, they've given me a bottom line. The answer is no. I meant to say Judge Gray. You meant to say Amy. Try that in court and I'll cite you. Gentlemen, it looks to me like this case is going to the jury. Harper, how did your relationship with your daughter change the past year? On um, this past winter, she met Josh Spillman. You seem like a nice boy at first, but I started noticing things. What kind of things? She would say, if Josh calls, tell him I'm not here. She was nervous. Jeanette wanted to break up with him, but she said that he had said he would see her dead first. What was your reaction to these threats? Well, uh, he tried talking to his parents. They were very defensive. Did they offer to talk to Josh? Well, they said they would. I don't know if they did. Mrs. Harper, I know you feel that there's no way to explain the loss of a daughter to someone who hasn't experienced it, but we need to try. Can you tell us your reaction when you found your daughter dead? At first, complete shock, but at the same time, I felt that I should have seen it coming. Why? Because Jeanette was so frightened. She was my only child. We wanted to have more, but we couldn't. I worried about her so much when she was little. And then I decided to go to a place where I believe there was an angel looking out for her. I just had to believe she couldn't be harmed. She died in your home, did she not? Our former home. They had a fight out in the driveway, apparently. Josh lost his temper, and he attacked her. And she fought him off. And then he went to his car and got the gun. Is there anything else you'd like the jury to know about your daughter? She was very funny. She liked to laugh. She was always telling jokes. When Jeanette was around, there was always laughter in the house. And then one day, it just stopped. No further questions, Your Honor. Cross-examine, Mr. Reams. I have no questions, Your Honor. The SUV has 18 cubic feet of cargo space. That may come in handy. I don't see myself in an SUV. I'd be afraid I might run over someone. Well, all the women at the office have them. They swear by them. If it's not like I have a lot of passengers, you might one day. True. If those fertility drugs kick in, we could fill up that SUV in one go. Can we change the subject? You brought it up. Look, you two, if I may offer an opinion, being angry at each other is not the fastest way to get pregnant. You need to take a meditation classes or something. Mother, you never had infertility problems. You don't know. I'm not infertile. I have fertility issues. All I'm saying is that I, it hurts me to see you both so tense. We're not tense. We're here to talk about cars, so let's just do that. That's it. I'm going to go look for them. Well, sweetheart, it's only 6 o'clock. Yes, so they should have been here by now. Well, you know, Vincent, he probably thought of someplace creative to take them. Mom, I asked you to take care of them. But he wasn't busy. It's one afternoon. That's all I asked. I'm in the middle of this trial, and I am redlining in the all-I-can-handle meter. Vincent is good with kids. Well, that's not the point. They're here. 
See? No harm done. Thank God. Hi, Mommy. <laughs> hey, Pink. Where's he been? Video King, Pizza Fantasia, and Candy Palace. My van is now unfit for dogs. I'll give you my wet, dry vac. It's amazing. Can't wait. How goes the car search? We're closing in. I'll be outside chiseling cheese off my odometer. Oh, wait. I said I'd pay you. I said no. What have I done now? Hey, need a hand? What gets glitter out of carpet? Replacing the carpet. I I'm sorry you had to go through this. But the girls have decided that you're the coolest guy on earth. It was neck and neck between you and Leonardo. Chanel was the swing boat. Well, it's nice to know I accomplished something today. Well, Mom was overwhelmed, and, and I was wrong to dump it on her. Don't be mad. You really are mad? I lost a whole afternoon of writing. It was my day off from dog dipping. I needed the time. Well, Mom didn't know that. Yeah, she did. She doesn't care. She doesn't think writing is real work. If you're not in an office with a tie and a deadline and a boss breathing down your neck, you're wasting your time. I, I don't think Mom feels that way. Okay. No, you're right. She doesn't feel that way. Most of the candy out of my van. I'm taking off. Okay. What? I don't know. Thanks for helping out. I offered to pay you. It's not about money. I believe I already thank you. No, actually, you didn't. Thank you, Vincent. I didn't realize it was such a huge imposition. It was. Look, I was busy dealing with the car business. You weren't doing anything, I so I assumed that... I was writing, Mom. You can go back home and write now, can't you? There's this concept known as concentration train of thought. Okay, I see what you're saying. I'm sorry that I interrupted you. Thank you. But it's not as if I haven't helped you out on a number of occasions. Well, I do not want to start keeping score with you. No, I think that's exactly what you want to do. I'm on trial for my parenting skills. I wasn't a perfect mother, but my family has always been top priority. Yeah, I know that. Really? You know that? Is that why you call me up daily saying, Mom, thanks for everything you've done for me? Is that why you sent me flowers on Mother's Day or even a card? I took you to lunch. Let's just drop it. Any idea how long James Joyce worked on Ulysses before he sold it? No, I don't. Twelve years. I've heard Fabio finish his books in a week and a half. Of course, I've also heard he doesn't really write them. It took him twelve years to finish a draft. Well, I hope he got a nice paycheck. You know, he described the process. He said, today was a good day. I wrote a sentence. No wonder it took him twelve years. Never mind. I am sorry that I presumed you'd do me a favor. It won't well, happen it's again. Not the, point. the point is, you don't take my work seriously. Of course I do. Okay. Good night. Vincent? Vincent, it pains me to say this to you, but if you take yourself so seriously, why do you spend your time washing dogs? Yeah, I have to pay the bills. Pay the bills with your writing. Yeah, I'm trying to do that. You won the pushcart prize. I understood how important that was. You're the one who walked away from it all. Let's not go there, okay? I do take you seriously. I take all of my children seriously. But I always thought you had the most potential, and I think you're squandering it. I'm squandering? How am I? Because my success is not happening on your schedule? Writing is a mysterious thing. I don't know... Where it comes from, I don't know. Where it goes when it goes away, it's fragile. I'm trying like hell to hang on to it, but I can't do that. If you won't respect my choice of profession, give me some distance. Fine. Take all the distance you need. Mr. Stallman, can you give us some kind of idea of what kind of a boy Josh is from a parent's perspective? Well, he was always quiet and um, very creative. He used to spend a lot of time drawing, and he was very good. We had his pictures all over the house. Can you tell us more about Josh's so-called brush with the law? He got a speeding ticket, and when they ran the license plate, there were several unpaid parking tickets, so they arrested him. The parking tickets? And they weren't even his. They belonged to my husband. Did the police drop the charges? Yes. This teacher who recommended therapy, did he or she say that Josh seemed particularly violent? No. He said Josh was a good kid with a bad temper. He said that it wasn't unusual in boys his age, but that it might help for him to try therapy. You decided against that? Yes. Um, for the moment, we, we were still discussing it. 
Were there any other signs that Josh was disturbed? We caught him smoking a couple of times. We had fights about that. Smoking tobacco? Yes. Did his smoking lead you to suspect that he might kill someone? Objection. Sustained. Careful, Mr. Reams. Did Josh ever talk to you about his problems? Rarely. You know, boys. Our other son never talked about problems either. How old is your other son? He's 19. He's a sophomore at Dartmouth. Did Josh talk to you about Jeanette? He told me he thought he was in love with her. I was so surprised because he never told me things like that. His father and I were so glad for him. Josh had never had a girlfriend. He, he was shy around them. I mean, he dated, but nothing serious. I thought maybe Jeanette was different. You know, he sure acted like it was different. He showed me her picture in the yearbook. He talked about getting a part-time job so that he could afford to take her out more often. He seemed so hopeful. See, that was the thing. He seemed better because of Jeanette. Why would we ever think he would hurt her? are over, but I'm afraid I used my cloud. He said I was on official business. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, please, I don't want to talk about me. Too bad, I do. Well, it's, it's going well, I think. Defense rest tomorrow. That look back good, huh? No, no, no. I just want to see you back in court. Yeah, me too. You know, I'm the one who's supposed to be scared here. I'm not scared. <laughs> Don't take up poker, you lie like a nun. No, the case is getting to me, I guess. I keep looking over at Josh Spellman's parents, like, how could you not have known? And on the other hand, the Harpers thinking that money is going to make up for the loss of their child. Uh, I don't think I'm being very objective. Well, you don't have to be as a person. Just as a judge. I don't want to let you down. I mean, it's your case. It's your courtroom. It's your decision. I gave you the case because I trust you. Why? Because you're compassionate. I have to check my compassion at the door. Says who? I gotta think about the law, not the people. No, well, what do you think the law is for? When you uphold the law, you uphold the good of the people. Not just the people in your courtroom, all of them. Nobody loses. I'm afraid of making a mistake. Amy, look at me. Now, from where I sit, there's only one way to go. Be fearless. Isn't it past your bedtime? Jury instructions. Try not to rhyme. Johnny Cochran ruined that for everybody. I'm almost through this thing, Ma. And I think I survived. No matter what, somebody's going to appeal. You have to be sure the verdict stands. You don't want to get reversed your first time up. You think the worst case scenario has not occurred to me? Sorry. I anticipate. It used to drive your father crazy. What about you? What are you doing up so late? Calling a dealer in Arizona. In Arizona? No sales tax. Yeah, plus you can see the Grand Canyon when you buy a car there. It's good thinking. Dad bought my car in Tucson, for your information. He got a very good deal. Can't drive memories to work, Ma. Sooner or later, you're going to have to let go. You think I'm being sentimental? Of course you are. That's why you're procrastinating. Daddy bought you that car. It reminds you of how he used to take care of you. Actually, it reminds me of how cheap he was. How can you say that? Because it's true. Every single bump and scratch... Reminds me of what a miserly grouch that man was. You don't mean that. Well, he was a very good man, but he could squeeze a dollar till it squeaked. Well, I had no idea. 
I protected you from his faults. Well, so if it wasn't about Daddy, then why can't you buy a new car? Because I've never done it before. Your father and I had an agreement. My work was more emotionally involving than his, so he handled all the major household decisions. It was fine. I never cared what car I was driving. It's not that I'm learning about cars. It's that I'm learning how to care about cars. You miss all the time. But that's the deal I made. I married for love, so I knew my heart could get broken. You think he was happy? I think he probably wished he'd done something else for a living. Insurance wasn't exactly his passion. What well, was? I'm not sure he ever knew. I remember when I started law school, he said to me, if I had to do it over again, I wouldn't have had a nine to five job. He was very proud of you. Yeah. I think he would have been proudest of Vincent though. For going a different way. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is now my duty to instruct you on the law that applies to this case. This has been an emotional trial and it may be tempting for you to vote with your hearts. I must instruct you not to do that. Sympathy is an important virtue, but it is not justice. To find the defendant negligent, you must find that the plaintiff has proven that the defendants had knowledge of their son's violent nature and of his intention to harm the deceased. If they did know and were in a position to prevent him and did not, they would be negligent. If you find the defendants negligent, then and only then can you go on to consider damages. This is a civil trial. So beyond a reasonable doubt does not apply. It's a preponderance. One piece of evidence in either direction would make your decision. But remember, we are talking about evidence and not emotion. It is not your job to put yourself in someone else's shoes and feel their feelings. It is your job to remember that reason is always the best companion to justice. Vincent, I'm sorry about yesterday. You're right about my attitude. I haven't taken your writing seriously because I don't understand it. It doesn't seem like work to me, but that's my problem. Your father had a different way of seeing things. God rest his soul. Here, I brought you something. Go ahead, open it. It was going to be a down payment for a new car, but I don't need a new car. A used car will be fine. I'd like you to use that money to quit dog grooming and concentrate on your writing. Mom, I don't want your money. Don't be silly. That money can buy you a lot of time. I'm doing fine. I, I don't want your money. Then what do you want? I don't want anything. This could be a nice safety net. Well, I don't want safety. That's what you want from me. I chose something else. I chose a hard job with a lot of risk. Stop expecting it to translate into something that looks like Peter's world or Amy's world. This is mine. Just let me have it. When Daddy died, you were a boy. And you were the only one that was left at home with me. I felt I had to protect you from everything. And I felt I had to depend on you for strength. I think I did too much of both. I don't mind letting you go. I just don't want to lose you for good. It's not going to happen. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Now I'm leaving. You know what Dorothy Parker said about writing? It's the art of applying the ass to the seat. Goodbye.
you would read your decision out loud in the courtroom, please. We, the jury, find the defendants negligent and liable for the death of Jeanette Marie Harper. Have you also decided on damages? We award the plaintiffs damages of $10 million. Did you say $10 million? Yes, ma'am. Does the defense want to pull the jurors? No, Your Honor. Well, uh, then on behalf of the courtroom, I would like to thank you and excuse you. No, I can't. I am a parent. I can't imagine this kind of loss. It's heartbreaking. But when I come in this courtroom, I am a different kind of parent. I have to be fair, not to individuals per se, but to the greater good. I am a guardian of the law, and no one can do that job but me. I understand you did your best. I know that you tried not to let the emotion get in the way, but I don't think you succeeded. I heard no evidence concerning parental knowledge or failure to control, none. Josh had a bad temper, so do I. He smoked cigarettes, an alarming amount of teenagers do when they don't commit murder. His, his brushes with the law involved unpaid parking tickets. I did not see evidence of a deeply disturbed boy. Sometimes things really do escape our knowledge and understanding. Maybe this is one of those things. The fact that the jury elected to fine for the plaintiff and increase the award by such a degree proves to me that the jury ignored the facts of this case as well as my instructions. I cannot let this verdict stand. I'm forced to set aside the verdict and enter judgment for the defendants. Excuse me. Your Honor, we just want to thank you. Don't. Judge Gray, this is outrageous. It's unheard of for a judge to dismiss a jury finding. It's unusual. It's not unheard of. You know I'm going to appeal. I won't even touch another case until I do. Never doubted it. What I'll be forced to say is that your inexperience in this area interfered with the proper finding. Say whatever you have to say, Mr. Collins. And there might have been a personal component. You were against me from the start. You know it. You want to know the truth? I was for you the whole way. I wanted you to find a way to make the Spellmans accountable. Like anyone else, I want to believe the fairy tale that this kind of tragedy is foreseeable. It would help me sleep better at night. I found against you because you didn't prove your case. And something else, I happen to remember something Professor Larkin said about you. He said you had a genius for theatrics, and it would take you as far as you wanted to go until you hit a judge who was smarter than you. And guess what just happened? It's an engine with doors. What do I care? I, I, I like it, Ma. It's good. Vincent, why don't you take it for a test drive? Why me? Well, you know about these things. Come on, Uncle Vincent. Let's go. This is nuts. I don't need a new car. Change is good, Ma. You ever read this book? This is... Yeah, it's great. I'm having a few problems. Well, keep going. It's better. Did you do okay with your jury trial? I threw out the verdict. Amy. Where did you get the nerve to do that? From you. You're the one who told me to trust my instincts. Did I do okay with you? Mother-wise, you don't have to say yes. I wasn't gonna... You say, give me a break. Thank you. Let's be say about it, baby. Let's make it up. 